Hello there, and welcome to today's ride, which is going to be a binary opposite to the ride I did yesterday. Yesterday, when I came out of Chris and Vicky's place, I turned right out onto the main road and started heading down the mountain for 300 meters. And then obviously I had to climb back up again. Today I'm doing the opposite. I've turned left out of the driveway and I'll be climbing for 300 meters to a place called Prat de Molo. As you saw on the sign there, it's 14 kilometers away. And as I say, it climbs about 350 meters. So even with my limited understanding of maths, that's about a 2.2 average percent climb. But again, it will be the longest climb I've ever done on a bike. On a long climb like this, it's a great opportunity to learn how to sync your rhythm. So your cadence, your breathing, and your heart rate. And you just juggle those three, bit of effort management, and hopefully you get to the top. Well, that's 20 minutes in and that's usually the point where I start to find things a little bit easier. When you first get on the bike, my body's saying, stop, stop. And then after about 20 minutes, it goes, all right, okay, we're doing this, you bastard. So let's get on with it. And it becomes almost fun. Not all climbs are just one continuous climb. Some have flat sections and even little downhill sections. And indeed, I've just had one now. And when you get to those, it's very tempting to kind of ride a bit faster, but it's very important that you try not to exceed your maximum cadence, which for me is about 90 revs. If you do, it kind of breaks your rhythm and then you spend the next couple of kilometers trying to find it again. Mind you, when you do get a little downhill section like that, there's nothing wrong with taking a little bit of a breather. There are a couple of little villages that I'll be passing on the way through to Prat de Molo. First one here is La Tech, and I can't remember what the next one is. But um, yeah, that marks almost halfway now. And so far, it's been pretty easy. just on another one of those little downhill sections. And while I'm enjoying it at the moment, it does mean I'm gonna to have to climb back up it on the way down because once I get to Prat de Molo, it's literally a 180 degree turn uh, to come back down again to the house. Ten k in now, and it's starting to get a little bit tough. When I told Chris where I was going, he told me that there was a tough section for about a kilometre where the gradient was six, seven percent. I think I'm on that now, although the crew's saying seven, eight percent. 
just got to grind my teeth, pedal as best I can and get through it. Ah, just as I thought, I only had about another 30 meters to climb. The road starts descending, so it's gonna have to climb again at some point. And of course, yep, I'll have to do this on the way back as well. What a view though. Well, according to the signs, that's me in Pratt de Molo, but according to my Karoo, I've still got about 2k left to ride. Hopefully this is the road towards the centre of town. Uh, nice majestic view of Caniger in the background, which is the sacred mountain of the Catalan. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> what a very picturesque little village square. Very atmospheric as well. All I can hear is the birds, uh, the sound of the clock tower, and one or two people speaking in French. I could be in a French film. Bonjour. Chris was telling me that Prat de Molo is a fortress town, and as you can see, there are the old fortress walls here. Once upon a time, uh, the town was actually in Spain, so maybe two, three hundred years ago. And if you're from the UK, you'll obviously know that Pratt is a bit of a slang word for somebody that's a bit stupid. Um, but here, Pratt, my understanding is that um, it's Catalan or Spanish for close to, a bit like the French pré. So um, we are close to Molo here, which is a town about 40 kilometers away, which I think is actually in Spain, Spain even today. I don't know if you can see that little doorway up there, but it just opens to nowhere. How strange. Well, seeing as I've cycled all of this way, it'd be very rude not to stop and have some refreshments. I'm certainly going to enjoy that. And what a view as well from here. That was a very pleasant little rest there at the cafe. Got my breath back over a, a very tasty little charcuterie plate. Unfortunately, yeah, 17 kilometers to the Spanish border does seem a little far. Plus, I got the impression it was, it was rather difficult on the bike. So I'm just gonna have to head back to the house now and enjoy this 15 kilometer descent. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.